News 5 is always investigating. Tonight we have new information about Benet's violent past. Our Five on Your Side investigators have been digging through records for two days and found out this was not the first time he held his own child hostage. Back in April, records show Benet was upset with his ex-girlfriend when she wouldn't meet him to pick up their son alone. He refused to hand over the child, even threatened to leave him right there on the side of the road. Eight years ago, he pleaded guilty to endangering children in Lorraine. His criminal history also includes charges of robbery, assault, and convictions for a violent robbery earlier this year. Now, on top of all that, Benet was only able to make off with his infant son after he escaped police custody. He'd been released from jail on a medical furlough. And it is far from the first time we've seen someone take advantage of that system to make a break for it. Five Year Side Investigator Scott Knoll has been digging through the medical furlough policies. He joins us now to tell us more about how this all happens. Well, those medical furloughs are granted by judges. So what kind of guidelines do judges follow when deciding whether or not to let an inmate out? We discovered there really aren't any. For 36 years, Ronald Adrian sat on the bench as a judge in Cleveland Municipal Court. He calls cases like Robert Benet's every judge's nightmare. Because the last thing that any of us uh, want to have happen is to have to come and stand in front of one of you and explain why we let somebody go out and do something that was terribly wrong. Adrian, who retired in January, says furlough requests usually started with a call from the jail, a request to release an inmate for treatment so the city or county wouldn't be on the hook for the expense. From there, he says it frequently came down to trusting his gut to make the right decision. In many instances, you got the information that was available to you, and the rest of it was flying by the seat of your pants. You know, it was based upon your experience, based upon what you knew about the case, uh, based upon anything that you might know about the individual. And if it's someone still awaiting trial, like Benet, that might not be much. Adrian says furlough decisions came down to three things, caution, common sense, and safety. While he wouldn't second guess the judges in recent cases where accused criminals walked away, he believes his colleagues are paying attention. I think any time that you have a failure of the system to function the way that we expect it to be designed to function, that everybody uh, does an agonizing reappraisal of the way that they handle those things. Despite a string of these cases in the last year or so, the retired judge says furlough requests were actually pretty rare. 